Thank you very much, Jarrett. Welcome to the casting booth here for not necessarily the Intel Extreme Masters, but the EPS yes. third place match. My name's Kyle Loris. And my name is Day9. And a really weird situation that we find ourselves in where Sokka, who has been trading the one and two spots with Hasuabs for as long as I can remember in EPS history, yeah. is now on the ropes in ninth place, needs top eight to qualify. The way he can do that is by winning this third, fourth place match. So weirdly, Hasuabs and Sokka, who are friends, you know Hasuabs has to be rooting against <laughs> Sokka just a little bit here. Yeah, that's uh, very, very apparent. And uh, I mean, during the entire qualification process in general, we saw that Sokka initially missed one or two of the qualifiers because yeah. of things like MLG dates that actually occurred during the start of this summer season yeah, for yeah. the EPS. Uh, and then the ones that he was able to attend, he got knocked out a little bit earlier by some PvP. Yeah, yeah. And I'm pretty sure, actually, that one of those times was, in fact, real that he was knocked out by. Yeah, real has... I. I will say I was very disappointed by the series that we just saw real play. Not just because the games overall were kind of meh from him as a player, but it's definitely below where his PvP usually lies. I like watching Reels Protoss vs. Protoss quite a bit. He's one of the players who is comfortable uh, against wide varieties of unusual strategies yeah. like Phoenix play, uh, like weird one base Colossus push against fast Warp Prism play. Has big comfort against those. His core tends to be good blink stalker control, which we weirdly saw foible in game one. No, you're entirely right with that. He does like to get really aggressive with that blink stalker play. It helps him very, very nicely. And, you know, I mean, going on to Antigua Shipyard here for the first map, this map for a long, long time, and even I think I feel to this day still has that really, really big blink potential. Yeah, I mean, this is the sort of map where it's super effective to exploit that front entrance, so much so that going for four gateways with Blink Observer is really strong. Oh, Real giving a wave to the camera. Aww. He's so adorable. <laughs> he is. And, yep, he was previously on the team type. Don't think he is right anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, but still performing very, very strongly here during also the open bracket of the Intel Extreme Masters, only going out at the very end stages of it. There's Sokka here. And again, he's been a hallmark of the German scene. Everybody here knows who Sokka is. Everyone knows that he has been an absolute EPS beast. So as you rightly pointed out earlier, it's very interesting that we see him on the ropes here um, in order to be able to actually qualify through to that final tournament. And of course, you see Sake and uh, Real doing a little bit of joking in the, in the game beforehand. And that's one thing that's really been um, prevalent in Sokka's career throughout. He is just always comfortable and calm, even against the most insanely good players. If you remember yep. when he took out DRG at uh, MLGs, <laughs> well, I'm really happy. I've been having a lot of problems in that matchup. Oh, I still have a lot of work to do. And it's almost like he's oblivious to how nervous he should be going up against someone that good. But right now, again, in this early morning hour, he has to win this series. Yeah, and I mean... Coming to Sokka's like kind of play style in PvP, we saw him during tournaments like the WCS Germany Nationals, for example, really playing to his opponent in the sense that going into the final yeah. against Hasu, who he'd already previously lost to in that yeah. open in the upper bracket, and then he made his way through the lower bracket to be able to come against Hasu again, had to win two best of three series to yeah. be able to take that title. He actually started doing a lot of one gate expanding to exploit his opponent. Yeah, oh, and that was so cool to watch. <laughs> and then at the end of it, he just holds up this little piece of paper that says one gate expand because he knows <laughs> how Hasu plays. <laughs> you know, I will, I will admit that Sokka has been playing in EPS for so long, has been playing in tournaments for so long that most of his games tend to be in tournaments. Yeah. So often you get the laddering player who's trying to work out a build, trying to flesh that one out, and you get into that ladder mindset of trying to make your own play the best possible. But Sokka is one of my favorites to watch because he's so comfortable with the idea of changing himself entirely to suit the opponent. Yep. So, guys, let's get this first game on in this third place match. As spawning up to the northern position, as our Red Protoss, give it up for real. And down in the bottom right, looking like a Viking from the heavens. The hero of German Protoss, along with Hasuabs, it is alternate attacks, Sokka. The crowd either likes Sokka or Vikings. Yes. We'll never know. We shall never know. But for now, I mean, 
if anybody's gonna be able to take out Saka here in this third place match, one of them definitely is real. Again, yeah. when I've been watching these EPS Summer Cups leading up to the EPS final that we'll be casting um, at a later date, it's it's a case of real has been able to power out very, very strong games against soccer in the past. Um, mostly, they've been extremely, extremely aggressive against soccer, and he's just been caught off guard. Say, for example, if soccer was going for some kind of three-gate um, kind of pressure kind of play, yeah, which uh, then Real has been just saying, well, I'm, I'm going like a four-gate, or I'm going like a four-gate blink, yeah, and Real. it's just been able to catch him off. Real's very much so that kind of player who, I, I don't want to describe it as doing all-in style builds, mm. but he does build orders that put so much pressure. Oh my god, the Automaton 2000 blocked the pylon. <laughs> oh my god, the tasteless bot strikes again. But, um... <laughs> I actually, I'm, I'm just so shocked that the critter blocked the pylon. That's actually kind of funny. You can actually see the delay there up at the top. But, um, yeah, Real likes to do these big blink plays, these aggressive robo plays, because it forces your opponent into a box. There's only so many strategies that can defend it. And as a result, you know, other than the free wins, you're a a against a, pr a predictable set of play. Yeah, and I think it's also very important to note that here for the EPS, all the qualification processes, even if you finished first in one of those 32-man tournaments, then you didn't instantly guarantee yourself a position in the final of the EPS. It was all based on points, so you couldn't just turn up to one, win it, and say, hey, well, I'm done for the Cups for now. But even if you, di even if it was that kind of format anyway, the, the EPS the Weekly Cups have massive, massive prize pools for weekly tournaments. It's like 600 or 700 euros, which for a Weekly Cup is amazing. That's that's actually quite a lot. Maybe maybe we should quit our jobs as casters <laughs> and start shooting for those weekly cups. You know, I will say about that qualification process, it's so easy to have an amazing day if you're a good player, get a whole bunch of wins, get that win, but not to have that consistency. Yeah. And the EPS demands that there is that sort of consistency. 100%. As for now, we will have real going for that robo. Uh, and meanwhile, Corona boosting Cybernetics Core. Not much else going on here. Setting out that probe once again, though. Was he going to throw down second gateway here? Uh, and recently in PvP, we've actually been seeing more of a fluctuation towards, you know, warp prism aggression with just exclusive gateways. Uh, yeah. Something that we've been seeing a lot in, say, for example, GSLs, etc. It's, it's so awesome. I mean, I will say, though, real looks a lot like he's doing this kind of straight two-gate robo-play, which has gained a lot of popularity. Elfie claims that four gates of a specific style always beat it, and we saw him do that exact maneuver against Grubby, whom he narrowly defeated in their series. Uh, real, wow, that's actually a little bit bold, going straight for that Observer right off the bat. Looks like he's clearly feeling comfortable Ooh. enough to do that Observer first play. Sake is going to instantly push and look at real going straight for the robo. This can sometimes be a little bit dicey, but as long as it keeps that sentry count high, if Sokka was to actually put on some aggression, he would be fine and dandy. And meanwhile, though, Sokka not really applying any aggression here. He's just poking forward, keeping his opponent in a bit of a defensive stance. Third, well, we have the Robo facility on the way here for Sokka, and it looks like he might be just be going for some kind of immortal expand. Oh, actually, no. Warping in a few more Stalkers. Yeah, I mean, I would expect that Sokka would throw down two gateways and just go straight for the four-gate blink and try to out-micro this. That's most common way for uh, Sake to open yeah. up, and of course, most common way for Protoss is to sort of play it off. And for now, that third gateway on the way here for Sake, so three gate robo with that blink, going to be very, again, as we pointed out before this game even started, very, very common strategy oh. to see on this map, and oh my god. It won't be a Colossus push, it'll oh. be the increasingly popular speed warp prism play. I love this play. Oh, this is so cool to watch. Sake will be going for that quite quick third gateway, but I'm a little surprised to see no fourth gateway up. Well, again, it's something <laughs> we pointed out the blink, and then we started talking about the warp prison play, and here we are. Not necessarily the same brand of warp prison play that we were talking yeah, about yeah. in terms of the gateways, but like, say, for example, double immortals in warp prisms or anything like that can be absolutely devastating. But Wait no, he's just going to use it for some aggression for when he, his opponent moves out to the middle of the map. Now, this place. is confusing. Why is he moving the warp prism all the way down here completely alone? I mean, you can do some warp-ins, but this is going to be so vulnerable to Sokka's style. I completely understand needing to leave behind a single Immortal, but I just don't understand this play of having this warp prism this far away. Wait, 
Why are Reels' units positioned so far back? I'm so confused, Kalaris. Yeah, he's, he's trying to kind of go down that blink forwards, I think, with that Observer, but it's not going to occur. Those units actually moving to the forward in the front position. But actually, Sokka pulling back here. What has he seen? He saw a, an aggressive pylon, and he's off to go and kill that, I think. Good play by Sokka. It might be a little bit of misfortunate timing. And look at that speed warp prism from Real. So uncommon to see speed warp prisms in this matchup. It, with just zealots in it, there's a blink under. And oh, Sokka's getting a nice target fire down. He will lose a single zealot. And here oh. comes all the rest of the stalkers. And will oh. they have enough time to blink? There's one. Oh, the stalkers were trying to get through to the warp prism, but they weren't able to. That speed providing them such, it's so much mobility against even the blink stalkers. It's a really nice save there. And Real is actually doing quite a considerable amount of damage with these zealots. That is an impressive play by Real, and we see a blink down. Real has found the money spot. It's like that spot on your back that you can't scratch or else it would break your shoulder blades trying to reach back there. It's where he fit the warp prism in, man. And that's the most annoying spot of all here, especially for Saki right now. He is just trying to get to it as best he possibly can do. Spread his stalkers in a, a bit too much of a clump there, so he won't be able to pick that up on its retreat. Meanwhile, we have Real moving into the middle of the map here, warping in down to the south in order to be able to bolster that force, and he looks like he's not going to be moving from that one base play too soon. And Saka's in an unusual spot in that normally you'd have enough time to build another gateway, sometimes even two against that speed warp prism play that we saw from Real, but not this time. With that drop, he was delayed so much. Now he's going to have to spend all his chrono boost oh. on his gateways. Sokka doesn't have any guys in gas. He has like one guy in gas here. So fueling some kind of army is going to be oh. so difficult here for Sokka. Oh, Sokka's just losing focus left and right. One Colossus out, two Colossus incoming for Real, and this drop Again, pops in for Real. He's going to try to instantly get out of the way. But God, great positioning once again by Real. Real just stretching his opponent so, so terribly thinly. It's still 28 probes to 28 probes, so by no means is Sokka down and out. Um, but, you know, Real keeps evening the odds here. And the problem is for Sokka is that Real, whilst evening the odds, has the higher tech ability. So he's going to be able to potentially push across the map here once this second Colossus comes out. Or as it, it already uh -oh. is out. Oh, this could get a bit scary if he doesn't get those great blinks. I mean, Real does have a clear opportunity to just expand. He can expand. He already has the lead in Colossus production. He has the two Immortals up, so he can deal quite comfortably oh. with Blink. The War Prism is getting very dangerously low. He blinks oh. forward and picks it off. Nice pick off there by Sokka. Going to try and micro back against these cells as well. Sokka bringing it back. And again, with that double Nexus production, he's going to have a better economy in just a little bit. Now it looks like oh, 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 Real oh. engaging at a very awkward angle. Those for Immortals Real. were a little vulnerable there for a second, but he now pulls back. Real oh. still not expanding. There's oh. the blink forward. He will be able to take down one Colossus, but there are still two remaining. Oh, really nice blink forwards there to be able to deal with that. Again, they were so vulnerable for so long. And Sokka eventually realizing that, taking one down nicely done. Meanwhile, though, look at this. Real warping into more units down to the south again. Looks like he's trying to pincer this force in the middle of the map. But this blink passed. He's going to try and use that mobility, try and run into his opponent's base. Oh, but uh, Real, he was trying to block off the rock of the round with pylons there for just a second. Oh, and it looks like Sokka going to pop up, try to pick off some probes, but no, a pylon wall greets it at the back. But a perfect play from Sokka, an absolutely perfect Blink Stalker play. Will pop down to the low ground. What a magnificent move there by Sokka. Yeah. Bought himself all the time he needs to get up more Immortals, get up more Stalkers, and there, finally having the opportunity to add on those gateways four and five. He needs a third geyser to be able to keep up his production. And Sokka is playing this blink play just, as you said, beautifully. It's, it's, it's really, really adamant. When you're going for that blink play, you need to keep your opponent dancing, especially when they have this much firepower. There's two Immortals and two Colossus here that, in, for all intents and purposes, could easily rip up the force of Sokka in a direct engagement, but he's just doing a really, really good job keeping him pinned back with such few units. Sake is in a really great spot, but Real's in kind of an unusual one. I mean, when you're going Robo play, if you aren't attacking quite quickly, in other words, if you let Blink Stalker numbers get too high, then you suddenly can't attack. You can easily defend, making an expansion make total sense, but this has been an attack that Real's been trying to do for about five minutes, and he hasn't been able to do it due to this yeah. Blink Stalker play. And now Saki's delayed just long enough to get up the perfect composition. 
But gosh, Real has a lot of units out on the map right now. Yeah, if somehow he can focus down on these stalkers, all the Colossus with those Immortals, that would be great for Sokka here. But Real, with that Guardian Shield, he has a lot of negated firepower here from Sokka. Nice force fields as well, separating those um, Immortals from the back, so he's able to get a few free shots off on those Zealots as well. And right now, Immortals shooting Immortals, that's not the best thing to be doing. Uh, but at the same time, he's getting so much DPS oh, off on these Sokka stalkers. is doing a oh. great job getting his Immortals up to the front line. There's the blink under one Colossus goes down. These three Immortals at the back ripping up all the remaining units and Sake with an extremely oh. close defense will be able to prevail. And with that defense, Sake with that and second Nexus still up. He is in the lead right now. Real, how does he transition from this? He's getting more Stalkers on the way here, but I don't know whether it's going to be enough against those three Immortals if Sake is able to micro them properly. It all it completely depends right now on Real's control. But again, to make that work, he, he needs Blink and he doesn't really have it at this point. Man, what a defense by Sokka. He did lose some probes. He's still way in the lead at 33. In fact, he's in the lead in every regard. 34 army supply, 33 worker supply. And again, if, if Real had just expanded, Real would soon be at five, six Colossus. He'd be approaching eight Colossus as he went to maxed. And Sake wouldn't be able to do much about it. Sake would have overproduced Blink Stalkers, which is not exactly the unit you want in your maxed army composition. But now Real is against the ropes. Sake is producing Colossus of his own. And Real's really being punished for trying to be overly aggressive in this game. With the War Prison Zealot aggression, Day9, do you feel that expanding off the back of it if you're able to get the damage done is the better option? Or how does that work, really? Oh, well, actually. Well, Sake is advancing forward, <laughs> straight forward Blink Micro. Three Immortals there, absorbing any hits that need be. Saki will briefly pull back, it looks like, to help his Colossus get to the front. But, you know, like you were asking beforehand, I absolutely think that it's a good thing to expand behind. I mean, War Prisms in the back of the main, when are they most strong? When your opponent's army is in the wrong position, and yeah. you can do that harassment. That'll only happen if you're defending. If you're attacking, these War Prisms actually become weaker. And for now, he will be able to get a few more probes with this second warp. There's a nice pickup there. Going to try and transfer that down for the natural as well. But there's a few zealots already here for Sokka. Meanwhile, his just unit composition in general is gathering such momentum. And right now, in terms of income tab, Real is completely mined out almost at his main. So Sokka has so much income in comparison to his opponent. And once those gateways are able to be fueled once again, Sokka is just in a phenomenal position in game number one. Sokka is rocking it hard, man. He has yeah. just the right units at just the right time. I especially love that little roundabout ringaroo he did, distracting Real, putting Real into the wrong position. Immortals are a little bit out of position, but that is no big deal. Probes are in the perfect Colossus suicide formation. <laughs> they are indeed, as that one Colossus comes oh, out. As it, man. Oh, man. Oh, he spreads them. Nicely done. Uh, but that Colossus... Is a probe going to die? Is a Wait, gonna die to where probes? are these uh, stalkers? It looks like the immortals get cuddled by some uh -oh. probe force fields. The Colossus from Sake hops up onto the high ground. A little bit of a flub, but Sake has the bulk of his army hanging out behind. And we'll be able to blink down the rest of this army. If a Colossus had died to probes then, I would have been a happy man. That would have been amazing. But no, Sake, with his great control, able to save that. GG, well played. Sake gets a clean game against Real. After the, it was kind of funny. Real kind of alternated between brilliance and folly. I, the the warp prism aggression was fantastic. It it killed a lot of probes. He evened up the odds there. And if it had yeah. expanded behind that, ex especially behind that first poke in, it can be a little bit dicey because you don't know if you're actually going to be able to do that much damage. Of course, yeah. it was with Real's control, he was able to do so. But if you expand behind that first poke in, then. By the time it comes to that 28-28 probe different uh, similarity, you've already got that expansion up. You're already pumping extra probes as well, whilst your opponent is rallying the defenses, trying to pump as much of their income into those units to be able to defend against that war prism, as opposed to producing a lot of probes. Yeah, you know, I, I will say I like war prism play in this yeah. matchup quite a bit. The speed war prism zealot, kind of interesting. We don't really see that a lot. But if you are doing that, you have to commit. There was too much. Yeah. I'm going to do a little bit of this. I'm going to do a little bit of that. I'm going to try to harass you. And then I'm going to attack. Well, that it doesn't quite line yeah. up. I mean, if you're pushing your opponent down on economy, the best way to take advantage of that is economy. So expanding behind makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Sake, even more so, uh, had Blink Stalkers out in the middle of the map. You want to encourage them to stay out in the middle of the map to make that 
work, prism play work a little bit better. Expanding all lines up with that, but real waited for so long. I mean, real can maybe make that attack work, but you have to be going immortal sentry zealot if you want to be doing a push. Waiting for the Colossus just ends up hindering you. It takes so long. And weirdly, uh, force fields can be quite, quite powerful against uh, blink stalkers yeah. if you have enough of them. It means that they can never offensively blink in. And I think one thing, I mean, to come back to is the fact that you're saying, well, you know, you can't be kind of middle of the road with your tactics. You know, you can't yeah. like harass and then just say, attack. But the, <laughs> the thing is, is that, you know, some people would see that as well but he's, a, he's harassing and then he's attacking. It's all the same thing, right? Well, no, because if you're harassing with Zealot Warp Prism drops, yeah. you're making the job doubly hard for you. You have to do double the damage yeah. you would need to do because of those two Nexus there. So yeah. you're, it's almost a hindrance to you because you're not able to ever, oh, yeah. almost ever produce as much income as your opponent is despite getting that damage done yeah. a little bit. Every Zealot you warp into harass is another Zealot that's not in your main army. Yeah. And if you kill just probes, then you have a smaller army, and he has a smaller economy. That's the trade-off Reel's going for. Sake, though, played that by the book straight up so well, and this means that Sake is one game away from being into that top eight spot. I'm bumping down Hasuabs. <laughs> Good luck, Germany champion.